today we're talking about the trade war. The most repetitive thing to call itself a war since Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yeah, which one are we up to this year? The Middle East still has problems. The last few days of trade war coverage have been such a 180 I might need a neck brace. I mean I've been writing and rewriting this one script like it's a text to my high school crush. Let me just set the stage for you. So I click publish on a video with this clip. Experts say China may give up Iranian oil, which makes up about 7% of China's total oil imports, to avoid jeopardizing discussions on trade. Then me, being the naive man I am, thought, eh, I'm about to go to bed. Let me just check the headlines really quick. I'm sure nothing has happened that'll keep me up all night. And well, sleep is overrated. So okay, what just happened? Well, this trade war has been on the back burner for a while now, with Steve Mnuchin popping his head out once in a while to say, everything is going great. Wait, you want details? Well, see you in a month. Many people, including me, thought that the end was in sight. But last weekend, we started to see a crack forming in that veneer. Out of the blue, Trump sent out a two-part tweet that rocked the economics world. I mean, just take it from Fox News' Stuart Varney. Big new tariffs on China trade, there was a real sense of shock. Why is he doing this now? And why such drastic action right out of the blue? Wow, calm down, dude. Yes, it was off to the races with speculation. This put into question whether a Chinese delegation was still going to come to negotiate late last week. So the Chinese have always said that they will not negotiate at, knife's, uh, at knife point, basically. And I think there's a lot of, there are going to be a lot of voices in Beijing saying that Trump tweeting that he's going to raise tariffs represents a knife point. And that the Chinese are thinking about not going. Don't worry, they still came to iron out the details of an agreement. But, oh boy you guys, I'd keep that iron out because I think I just found quite the wrinkle. So this raises the question to everybody who doesn't regularly follow Trump's Twitter feed. Why out of the blue did he tweet a threat that almost derailed these talks? Turns out that the reason wasn't boredom, sleep deprivation, or a particularly long round at the bathroom. But rather some next level, and I'm trying to think of a family friendly way of saying this for YouTube here, but bull poop from China. Reuters reported a diplomatic cable from Beijing arrived in Washington late on Friday night, with systemic edits to a nearly 150 page draft trade agreement that would blow up months of negotiations between the world's two largest economies. <sighs> nice try China, but you're dealing with a truly unpredictable and unstable man here. This wasn't small stuff either, we are talking William Barr levels of completely changing the reality of a document. China had deleted its commitments to change laws to resolve core complaints that caused the US to launch the trade war. Theft of US intellectual property and trade secrets, forced technology transfers, competition policies, and access to financial services. And lastly, currency manipulation. Oh, that's pretty much the entire agreement. We sent them the 150 page negotiated agreement, they made some edits to it, and sent us back the title page. Of course, then we saw... On a sunny Friday morning in Washington, the trade war escalated with a handshake. The top Chinese and U.S. negotiators ended their 11th round of talks cordially, but the two countries are in economic conflict. Yes, our 11th round of trade talks. Although I'm guessing they were mostly, hey, remember that deal we were negotiating? Here it is. Clearly that strategy didn't work though because the U.S. increased tariffs from 10 to 25 percent on 200 billion dollars of Chinese exports, including seafood, luggage, purses, and parts sold to U.S. companies such as circuit boards, microprocessors, and machinery. And the U.S. is threatening to go even further and impose tariffs on all cell phones, clothing, and laptops made in China and exported to the U.S. This is where we find ourselves right now, with an escalating trade war to deals and everybody except Trump agreeing that the solution is more talking. I guess here's our deal, oh well, here's our deal. Well, there you go, see you in a month. With that background, my goal today is to talk about what's going to happen next. First, these tariffs, the geopolitical equivalent of cutting your arm off so you have something to throw at your opponent. 
It's predicted that this will reduce China's GDP by 0.8%, which, woohoo! But it will reduce ours by 0.3%. So, boo! Then today, China announced it will hike tariffs from 10% to 25% on a total of $60 billion worth of U.S. imports. Real creative gum back there. No, you're the idiot. I gotta tell you though, if you're gonna do something so easily comparable, you can't just say the U.S. raised tariffs from 10 to 25% on $2 billion worth of Chinese goods. So we're gonna do the same for $60 billion. Oh, you put in a dollar? Well, I'll call your bet with this quarter. My goal now is to talk about the two main theories of tariffs and who's going to pay for them. Because there's quite the debate going on right now. First question though, I've been talking about tariffs for a ton of this episode without defining what a tariff is. I know, blame the guy who writes these things. I truly live in a studio apartment. A tariff is essentially a tax on an imported good. So yes, the federal government is actually making a pretty penny on this trade war. I mean, I wouldn't quit your day job of bleeding the middle class quite yet, but it's definitely a pretty good side hustle. With the logic that you're taking certain imports and putting a tax on them, well, clearly things are probably going to get more expensive, right? I mean, I've never looked at the tax on my receipt and seen a negative number before. Well, it does make things more expensive, but not exactly in the way certain people will lead you to believe. I mean, if the entire tariff was about to be levied on the end consumer, these numbers would be a lot simpler to predict and calculate. We recently saw this debate come up to a head on Fox News. Our country can take in $120 billion a year in tariffs, paid for mostly by China, by the way, not by us. A lot of people try and steer it in a different direction. It's really paid, ultimately, it's paid for by, largely by China. But Larry, that isn't true. It's not China that pays tariffs. It's the American importers, the American companies that pay what in effect is a tax increase and oftentimes passes it on to U.S. consumers. Uh, fair enough. In fact, both sides will pay. Both sides will pay. Oh, he said it, not me. Now, I can't speak to the specifics of how these tariffs are going to play out, because who knows? I mean, last week I would have told you we're going to have a signed deal by June. But what I can do is give you some historical context. First, let's put on our rose-tinted glasses and view the conflict through Donald Trump's eyes. Why might China pay for these tariffs? It's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison, but... Republican backlash is growing against President Trump's $12 billion plan to help American farmers feeling the pain of the escalating trade war. Last year, when China canceled soybean orders, the soy boy coastal elites weren't hungry enough to keep farmers in the black. See, the U.S. government had to step in with a $12 billion bailout. Of course, it's not exactly the same thing because those soybeans are currently rotting in the fields as opposed to being exported. But the logic is that some leaders might be willing to pay some money to get that stuff out of inventory, especially if you don't have another place to sell it. The second argument supporting this Trump idea revolves around market access. The best example here comes from 1897 when foreign exporters absorbed at least 60% of an increase in sugar tariffs as they dropped their prices to maintain access to the mighty American market. Elephant in the room here, when someone's main example of a success story comes from more than a century ago, generally not a good sign. In this case though, a base truth still holds. These tariffs might not lead to American manufacturing, but if made in China goods remain 25% more expensive than, say, made in Vietnam goods, well, then they might lose some of their export market to other competitors. This could be especially annoying because... China has been making greater efforts to promote its manufacturing industry since the implementation of the Made in China 2025 plan. Yes, Made in China 2025. Something that probably deserves its own episode when I'm free. For now though, the goods they're trying to sell to other countries include the goods America is currently slapping tariffs on. 
The final way China might be able to indirectly pay for part of these tariffs is currency manipulation. What? Manipulate their currency? China would never do that. Customers might also avoid paying part of the bill if the yuan depreciates against the dollar. Let's put it this way, imagine it's 2008 and I agree to pay you a Zuna day to work for me. Microsoft can do no wrong, it's the media player of the future. Well, as the Zune values swiftly dropped, I'd still technically be paying you the same amount, but using a near worthless currency. This strategy would essentially be a way of China finding out how to pay factory workers even less. This would keep the prices down for their exports to America and alleviate some tariff pressure. But oh boy, hope no one was planning on saving money in that country. The argument against everything Donald Trump believes is, despite all the very compelling reasons I just laid out, China doesn't seem to be paying for the tariffs on these products, and someone has to pick up the bill. Now all this got me curious about a different, more recent precedent, because this trade war didn't just start. President Trump's decision to slap high tariffs on solar panels, that could have a big impact on that industry as a whole. There are reports that indicate that thousands of workers could lose their jobs this year. That report was from a year ago, and I could not find a single video of anybody following up. So what happened? Did China pay the tariff? Short answer, no they did not, and solar panels got more expensive in the very short term. This is where the long answer indeed becomes very important though, because slightly longer answer, in a diplomatic move of debatable relevancy, China cut subsidies for domestic sales of their solar panels, forcing their companies to become more aggressive internationally and actually driving down prices. The increased global supply has driven down the cost of buying a panel in the United States to about 40 cents a watt, from 45 cents shortly after the tariff. In fact, Wood Mackenzie Power and Renewables, whoever they are, said prices could fall to about 30 cents by the end of 2019, less than they were before the administration began considering a tariff in 2017. Wow, I honestly was not expecting to read that when I started researching this episode. What does that mean though? Well, China still isn't paying the tariff, American suppliers and consumers are. But this 30% tariffs on imports, well, I don't know, we were getting ripped off so badly that they were able to drop the price 30% and still be competitive. This result shocked me so much I looked into another year old tariff. A new tariff approved by President Trump will soon slap a tax on imported solar panels and washing machines sold here in the states. Alright washing machines, I'm excited. This was another tariff that was predicted to ruin all sorts of people's lives that nobody followed up on. So what happened here? Well, this result was definitely more in line with what critics were warning. First Chinese washing machine exports plummeted to the United States. Washing machine prices were up, but China again didn't pay the tariff. This time though they did not use a domestic policy to make their companies more competitive. Even worse, fewer Americans were investing in new laundry equipment. Many speculate that this is because washing machine tariffs made Chinese washing machines more expensive and steel tariffs made domestically produced washing machines more expensive. And this gave companies a choice. Do we keep prices the same and take on higher losses because the price to produce got more expensive, or do we pass that expense? I'll give you a hint, we're talking about companies here. Yes, prices went up more than 10% after they had been going down for years. Domestic manufacturing took on a 2.5% sales hit, which is the exact opposite of what these tariffs were put in to achieve, but that can be partially blamed on the completely separate steel tariffs. Basically washing machine retailers and manufacturers were being taken to the cleaners and customers were the ones paying for it. And because we weren't paying for it, either buying used washers or being content with what we have, well, manufacturing and GDP are taking a hit as well. So who's right about these coming tariffs? One second, let me get into the, my future predicting mode.
Ask again later. Yeah, I mean a random Chinese domestic policy can send these prices to a pre-tariff level. Or maybe a different trade problem could overshadow these new ones, like the steel tariffs and washing machine tariffs having a magnifying effect over the domestic market. Two things do seem to be consistent though. One, China does not directly pay for the tariffs, so it does get passed on the supply chain. And two, the mainstream consensus has not properly predicted the impact of the last two tariffs. One didn't go far enough, and the other went way too far. I'll keep following up with these updates, but for specific predictions, well, reply hazy, try again later. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left in my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.